Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about my interview experience at Hong Kong University for Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences program. So a bit of information about myself, I am a student studying in China, I'm studying the IB program. A week ago I just finished my IB exams and so I'm part of the May 2021 cohort. I applied to university at the end of year 2020 and at the beginning of 2021. So this is pretty recent and I really hope through sharing my experience it can help any future applicants with preparing for interview for the courses in HKU or specifically for the courses I applied to. For this, I actually got my group interview invitation before my individual interview invitation. Unlike CUHK, which the group interview is specifically for um, science, this admission group interview is, as far as I know, there were I think about 10 people in one group and these 10 people are people that apply to across different subjects so they don't group you by subject this means that the content of the interview won't be subject specific they gave us a guide for this one so it says instructions for students for critical analysis so we know that for this interview they will be providing an unseen text an article or something and then they want you to evaluate this text critically this one it says you will have 20 minutes to read through and critically evaluate the article which will be shared by zoom you will not know what the article is about and knowing that it's a group interview it won't be subject specific they did provide a guide on how you can critically evaluate this article so level one read and understand the article duh level two critically evaluate the article this means so for instance what are the points in the article with which you agree that you disagree, justify your answers, or are there any arguments or statements that are rational and logical? Does the article present an unbiased account of its topic? Uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the article? What are the implications of the article's main points for today's society? Are they positive or negative? And is the topic one of importance in today's world? In what ways? These are just guidelines as to how you can critically evaluate the article. In my opinion, this wasn't very difficult for me. So yeah, in terms of the interview that day, they gave us an article, I think it was from Japan Today, about Japan canceling the Olympics. And so we just had some time to read through it and they pasted it in a Word doc. So they don't even let you see the web page of the article. What I saw from the interview, um, there were about 10 people in that group. I noticed that some people were just blatantly describing what the article was about. I don't think this is what they're looking for. As I said before, they're looking for critical thinking, critical analysis. So understanding the text is just one thing. You need to assume that everyone understood the text. You cannot just summarize what the text said because everyone read it. So you have to look at the details critically and also clearly evaluate. Some people were doing like ethos, logos, pathos, which in my opinion, it's good and it's on track but they only mentioned like these stylistic features they didn't justify it which is also important you have a point you have to have evidence you have to explain it and then link it back so it's just like the PEL heel thing it's the same thing for an interview except you're doing it verbally for me I remember one thing that I said which I think is very significant was that the article was an opinion article the article was talking about whether or not Japan should cancel the Olympics and things like that because of COVID-19 but I I pointed it out that it was an opinion article so everything that the author said was simply an opinion it was not the government's perspective it was not the general public's perspective it was not the athlete's perspective it's simply one's own opinion i looked at the author's perspective and the point of view that they're coming from and used that to answer the question of for instance is the article biased or not the strengths and weaknesses of the article and things like that i remember there's two hku um, professors at first they're merely just um, observing and listening to our discussion but later on some of them asked questions of course don't go against the professor and say you're wrong what I said was right you have to be very open-minded and with even though other people wants to go against 
what you said you need to just accept it and say i see where you're coming however i still stand on my point and justify it just be respectful of all the other applicants and also the professor i forgot how long the interview was but i think each person had the chance to speak two or three times it was literally everyone fighting over the microphone it was like and then because there was 10 people and everyone of course wanted to shine i feel like part of it is like don't be afraid to speak first and try to like go in front of everyone else but at the same that you have to be very respectful so for instance if you've spoken like six seven times while other people have not spoken yet just give other people the chance you have to show that you're very generous as well and you're not just a selfish person trying to like take all the opportunities of other candidates i remember at the end of the group interview they located us into another room where there was student ambassadors from hku and they just answered questions so another thing i forgot to say is to dress formally because all the professors dressed so formally with blazers and ties, female professor with a blouse. So you want to do the same thing to show that you do give them the respect. Okay, next for HKU biomedical science individual interview. So I remember that took place on a Friday night. And I remember I found the invitation email in my spam folder. And I was so scared because when I found it, it was already over the deadline where I accept my interview. So I quickly emailed back the person that was responsible, the person who sent the email. And so they put me at the end of like all their interviews, which is Friday like evening. In order to prepare for an interview, first I looked into a program, how the program is structured. I also looked at some of the specialties of the scientists in HKU. So I'm interested in, for example, neurobiology, Alzheimer's disease, and things like that. And I looked on their biomedical science webpage and I noticed there are some professors that did research in this area. So this is something very good to do before your interview because if you are able to drop some of these things that you saw and some of these traits about the program, about the scientists that uh, attracts you, it really shows the professor that you're genuinely interested in the course and that you will be a good fit in that program. I remember there were some general areas of research interest within the School of Biomedical Sciences in HKU. So the first one is brain and cognitive sciences, the second one is cell signaling and cancer biology, third one genomics and biomedical data sciences, and four stem cell molecular and developmental genetics. Fifth, structural chemical and synthetic biology. So it's mainly these five areas. And for me, I'm mostly interested in brain and cognitive sciences. And so within this webpage um, below that, there's seven or eight uh, professors name. And then there's a link into it. So you can click in to see what the professors are researching right now. For this preparation, you wouldn't have to start very early, maybe just one or two days before the, the interview so that you familiarize yourself with some of the um, general areas of research. For instance, if they ask you what you're interested in, if you talk about something like pharmacology that is not a major part of the program, then they would think that you're probably not good fit of the program because what you're interested in like we don't teach it so it's just important for you to know what the program is about and you link your interest into it so that the professors know that okay this this girl she knows what she's getting herself into she knows the general courses that will be taught in this program and things like that so i basically linked my interest to um, some of the research that i've done before about like alzheimer's into um, the professor's uh, research within the brain and cognitive sciences area so that was one of the questions they asked me okay what are you interested in can you tell us and i think i handled that like okay but what's the second question that really threw me off because I thought they were going to ask about COVID-19 because it's a very trending topic, especially end of 2020 last year. But they asked me, let's talk about stem cells. So I was like, okay, I do know what stem cells are. We learned it in the IB curriculum, but it was really just something that you would not have predicted. Now that I look at it again, it is one of the areas in the research interest. So I'm guessing that it could be that one of the professors specializes in that area and they're like, okay, Let's talk about this one. Let's tell like tell me what you know about it. And they also asked me about how stem cells are used in treatment. I do know what stem cells are, but I made a stupid mistake. I think I said umbilical cord stem cells are totipotent. And one of the professors just corrected me at that point. She's, he's like, no, it's not totipotent. It's pluripotent. And I was like, oh. It was within our IB curriculum, 
but I didn't review it and it was just a very dumb mistake because I know that I'm expected to know that and I made that mistake yeah I listened to the professor I listened to him explain it and at the end what he said was oh it's okay you don't need to know this level of detail at this point the, the other part of my mind was like um actually I do I just forgot went on some discussions about stem cells they asked could you provide an example of how stem cells are used in treating diseases so I talked about um Stargardt's disease and things like that because this, that was what I learned at the IB curriculum so that was that I was just very embarrassed about that tiny mistake that I made because I know I should have known that so I still got an offer so it was okay and I think I got my offer in sometime in March so somehow I still got it despite the mistake I made. I think that was it for um, HKU interview. And so it was not a lot, but it was definitely more academic in general compared to other interviews I've had. They really do follow up on what you said and they ask like for more specifics. And that was, I think that was where I panicked. I really hope this video helped all of the future applicants out there. And so that was basically what my experience for interviewing at HKU.